it's about normalizing us stop asking each other what's going on like should be should be you know we should be quantifying it how much is going on you know what what are the things list out the thing you have going on hey steve weiner here from getrevix.com and today we're gonna keep going with our nt and tenant to tenant device migration we're gonna before we package everything up and talk about uploading it to intune we have to cover um the tasks and scripts and the way they work for the post migration tasks we went through the main start migration.ps1 powershell script which is the primary orchestrator and now we have to look at the rest of the pieces so how much stuff uh, uh, is is happening <laughs> We're, just, we're gonna use two test files, test XML, test PS1, um, to be our task and script that we're actually gonna write out. But first, let's talk about how they work. So you've seen now for a while, and, and they're in the repo, that there's an XML of the same name in, the, in a PowerShell script. So the way it works is uh, when we set all these pre-migration and then the device goes off on joins 10 and A, joins 10 and B, we're setting up a bunch of things to start running upon uh, the, the next login. Um, but, you know, they're timed out in a certain order. Um, so the very first thing we're running is what we call the middle boot. Now that's pre-login, so that's set to run um, on the next boot. So let's use that as, a, as an example, right? So we're setting all the tasks with this XML. And if you've never messed with scheduled tax, tasks, we're gonna walk through it and we're gonna talk about how you can modify it and how to get this XML template. But basically the idea here is you're looking for a few key things. You're looking for how the script is running, meaning what user context. Um, and we're running everything as the system. So it has privileges to the old user profile and the new one. Um, we are, uh, determining when the script runs so you see the trigger section here um, this looks different depending on how you do it for example the middle boot xml runs on the boot you know every time the device boots um, whereas if i go to another one for example the group tag xml you can see this is this is a logon trigger and we have a 15 minute delay right um pt 15m right so that's how that's set up um, let's go back to the middle boot one and finally we have um, our um, the actual executable action in there and you can see there's a command and an argument and this is no different than calling something from a command prompt uh, in that context so we're we're being very explicit in calling PowerShell and we are passing through the execution policy bypass window style hidden that keeps the PowerShell window from opening up. And we're pointing to our file. Now, um, of course, these are all the files that were unpacked in the beginning. So you see our path, see program value to migration. Let's talk about how we would get to this, right? Because we, we're not gonna sit here and type out each XML. We're gonna get a template going first. So let's start with that. So I have two files here and I'm gonna open them up. Um, let's open up our XML, our test XML. And let's do our test PowerShell script. And let's talk about how they relate to each other. Okay, so for the XML, the first thing we're gonna do, I'm actually gonna close that, and I'm gonna open the task scheduler application. And this is great because this will allow us to uh, go ahead and uh, create tasks. We don't want a basic one, we want a lot of control, so we're gonna hit create task. Okay, so. What are we gonna call this one? We're gonna recreate the middle boot process. So we're gonna call it middle boot. Um, we're gonna keep the name simple. Uh, run only when the user is logged in. No, we want run with highest privileges, whether the user is logged in or not. Now change user or group. So you should be able to query system and that'll give us the uh, NT authority system we're looking for. And highest privileges shouldn't matter here, but we got it. Author doesn't matter. Triggers, new. So we want this task to start on the boot up. So on that login, at startup. 
So that's the startup of the device. We can delay a task so we can have the, for example, the boot be the trigger, but it waits a certain amount of time. Um, in this case, we're not doing it, but for example, when we do log on, um, at log on, we can delay the task for, you know, really however long we want. We can, we can customize that as well. Um, and in certain things we're gonna, in the future, we're gonna run as users and um, kind of hop around the context, but we're gonna leave this on startup as system. Um, we're gonna hit okay. And then we can put our actions. What is the script gonna do? So in our case, we are going to start a program. And we're gonna browse the full context of uh, Windows PowerShell. Oop. If you don't know this, just we're gonna kinda of just navigate there. There it is. So we're calling full PowerShell executable and our arguments. So we're gonna say execution policy. Uh, is bypass. Yep, gotta be able to spell. Window style is hidden. And the file is C program data into migration middle boot dot ps1. And that should do it. I hit OK. You can also have conditions um, that trigger the task, so it'll trigger on this, <coughs> excuse me, only if the following conditions are, are met. We don't want to hold this up if it's on battery power. We don't want it to only start on AC power. Um, you know, we we'll turn those off, but these could all be customized in there. So the bottom line is we have this, tasks, this task, um, and we're going to export it. You don't want these to run on your you know, your local machine. So I'm going to, I'm going to export this to the desktop and I'm actually just going to disable and delete this. We don't need this actually running. All we needed to do was make that. It's kind of a GUI to make the XML, right? So let's open it up and look at what it made for us, right? So we got the name URI middle boot. That's the URI is the name, uh, registration info. That's you know who made it like i said author doesn't matter the trigger so we have our boot trigger if you look at the user sid s-1-5-18 that is your nt authority system so that's perfect stop if going on batteries false uh disallow start if on batteries start right so we you know we, we uh we got rid of those power restrictions so here we have now this should be the same thing as we had here when we looked at it yeah so everything the same from our our our, um, our github piece um, which is up there so this is the now so basically when we're setting this task and we're calling the xml it's set on the machine to call the powershell script so let's look at the powershell script and let's look at what uh what what that's doing so because this is the first in the um, post migration activity, we now need a post migration log. I think it's very helpful. So the first thing we're going to do, actually, I should set the error action. Error action preference equals silently continue. Is that it? I th okay. So the first thing we're going to do after that is we are going to create. Uh, sorry, let's create and start uh, the post migration log post migration log equals c program data into migration uh, post migration log let's get real creative with these names here start transcripts nope start transcript path post migration log verbose and we'll write host let's begin logging middle boot ps1 or whatever you want to call them there 
perfect. Now, the whole point of the middle boot is to do two things. It's to change the the name of the original directory. I'm gonna show you for a second here what's gonna happen. So this is our machine still in tenant A. We didn't move it yet. But if you look at the profile, Rick Jones, that's our user. Um, ultimately, we're gonna have a new Rick Jones. Rick Jones at stevecapacity.com as opposed to Rubix dev. So in order to avoid any mix up or you know, any weird naming issues, we are going to rename this after we leave the tenant because we don't need this anymore. Um, so we're gonna put an old underscore in front of it just to differentiate and then we'll clean it up later. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna rename, uh, rename the tenant a user profile. And we're gonna do that by us getting tenant tenant a user profile name okay so first hiccup if we're running a system and we've unjoined the device already how are we going to know what that name was well if you remember we captured that back in um we captured that back in the beginning. So I'm gonna open start migrate. Uh, here you go, open with code. Yes, open, that's fine. So when we came down here and we get got some info, you can see I got that active username, right? Remember we got it before and we stored everything in the XML. So take a look, user is stored and that was stored to our, our path of uh, program data into migration. So when that's all said and done, I'm gonna have that file, that XML file, I can pull it back from. Remember, that's, that's why we put it there. And if we take a look at what's in there or what will be in there for my test machine, let's open this up. You can see uh, we have the group tag of the device, the serial number, the locations we're gonna migrate. We have the username, so we captured it already. So we just have to import that to get it back. So we're gonna do that right now, right? All we have to do is uh, declare this variable as XML. We're gonna say MEM settings equals get content. Okay, get content. Now, uh, all we need here is the path. So we're gonna get content, path, see program data, into migration, MEM settings, XML. Okay, and now we're gonna parse out the config of that to that file dot config. Great, and we can pull the user right out of there. Equals MEM config dot user. And that's perfect. So now we have the user, so we can say great hosts, uh, we could say uh, found previous user user and we're gonna uh, current uh, the current name oop oh didn't want that current name and the new name so the current name that it has is just going to be C users user, nothing fancy there. And what are we going to call it? We're going to call it, um, like I said, we're going to put old in front of it. So C users, old underscore user, and that'll put an old in front of it. So um, if, let's do, if the test path of current, actually we don't need to say if it's not, we can say if the test path for current, current name, if it's there, we're going to rename item path is current name, new name is going to be new name. We'll write host. Host, renaming, renamed path, current name to 
new day. And if for some reason it's not there, even though it should be there, right post. We'll say path current was not found. All right, that renames it. Our other thing now, so it's very important because remember the task will run this every boot up. Um, we don't want that. We want it to stop. We only wanted it on one boot up. So we're going to disable the task. Uh, this is a trend you'll see for every one of these, right? The task calls the script. The script stops the task from running after it runs. Um, so we're going to disable that. And we're going to disable scheduled task. And all we need is the task name. And in this case, we know it's middle. That's it. And you can write that out to the log, write host, disabled, middle boot, test. Uh, and now we're just going to make the device reboot again. Remember I said that used to be kind of a manual thing. Um, but it's going to reboot 30 seconds from all of this. So, so we can say write host. Stopping log for middle boot. And we can stop the transcript. And there we go. Right, and that'll rename it for us. As I've done before, I think I lied to you in the intro. There's some interesting things going on here in the post-migration tasks. I said we wouldn't be going through all of them. And maybe we won't. Depends if I get bored, but I do think there's a lot here that's going to be helpful to go through how we're bringing back a lot of this data. So I think next time we'll try to get into one or two more tasks. I, I got nothing else. One, two, three.